Good morning, and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, and I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. to give landowners valuable information that you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And if you are in need of representation in any Marcellus Gas, natural gas related issues, estate planning, you can always contact me directly at 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. At the Clark Law Firm, I represent, again, landowners and only landowners, gas lease negotiations, pipeline right-of-way agreements, um, you know, at this point, I, I say this often, we've negotiated with over 50 different companies for pipeline right-of-way agreements and easement agreements in Pennsylvania, doing more and more estate planning work for clients and other uh, individuals who are becoming new clients, unitization issues, royalty issues, any contract related to natural gas development, as well as any issues that landowners may have with regard to the development. So we do all those things, and we do them only for landowners never represented the gas or pipeline company and i never will okay this is the time i remind everybody check out pagasleaseattorney.com check out pipelineattorney.com whether you're looking for representation or just information check out the websites check out the blogs a lot of valuable information that you can gain from those sites okay so I want to talk today, kind of, uh, I think it's going to be a great show, I hope so, anyway, um, but I'm going to start off, I want to talk about some royalty issues first, and I'm going to talk about some leasing issues, and as I say all the time, different things come up during the week, uh, make me think, hey, that would be a good idea for a radio show, jot things down, uh, sometimes I have a very long, long list, and you know this is one of these times, and it seems like I always have plenty of lists, uh, or long lists, uh, for multiple shows, so what I want to talk about today is something that's occurring in certain areas of the state where landowners are giving the opportunity or given the opportunity to choose between a couple different types of offers. And what I mean by that is this, is that with an offer that you're going to have for a gas lease, I'm going to talk about gas leases now, for an offer for an oil and gas lease, what you often will see, well, you always pretty much see, is a bonus offer a per acre leasing price that they're going to pay you a certain amount of money per acre to lease your property then after that if there is development and gas is produced and royalties are going to be paid well then you're also going to have a royalty percentage offer most people know that the state minimum is 12 and a half percent and we obviously want to get the highest royalty possible then there's another important part of this equation is are you going to have any addendum language that's going to limit or eliminate the company's ability to deduct from your royalty post-production costs for such items as gathering gas, transporting it from your well site uh, and other well sites in the region to this point of sale. There may be compression, dehydration, and other expenses as well, but that is an extremely important component is will the company take deductions for these post-production costs? Example I use very often is, um, and this is only example, say that gas is being sold. It comes out of the ground from your well site. It's transported to a local uh, or to an interconnect point to the point in which this gas gathered from this area goes to an interstate pipeline. And we'll say, in this example, it's sold there for $4. But the question is, well, is your royalty gonna be calculated at $4 gas, or is the company going to be able to deduct the cost that the company incurs to transport it, maybe dehydrate it, maybe compress it, from that well site to the point of sale? As a landowner, you certainly do not want to have these deductions. As a landowner, you want to have your royalties calculated at the furthest downstream price possible. In fact, uh, judging by my heating bill, you would like to get that price that the consumer pays at their house. However, you're not gonna be able to do that. So what we wanna do is, is in any case for a gas lease, the first step, and there's multiple steps, but one of the first things you're going to clearly look at is, well, what is my bonus compensation gonna be on a per acre basis? How much money am I gonna get? 
if this lease goes through per acre, what am I going to be paid? And then I want to have the highest possible royalty uh, percentage. So in the event of my lease does produce gas, then I'm going to get as much money from that gas as possible. And then finally, a very big part of the equation is, uh, with this is again limited to compensation issues, uh, you want to say, okay, I want to get the best royalty calculation method possible. I want to get the best price for my gas. I want to have my royalties calculated at the highest price possible. So the further downstream that's going to be and without deductions for post-production costs, that's going to be best for you as the landowner. I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 on these stations. Been doing a weekly radio show, All Things Marcellus, since August of 2010. So I talked before about having these ideas. Uh, they just keep coming. So stick with me because I'm going to be here a while. So, okay, so what we're looking at here, talking about this royalties and this kind of first first instance, what you're looking at in this offer, you want to get the most money possible now in the future, and you want to have it set up that you're going to have the best royalty calculation possible. So, okay, it is not uncommon now to see landowners, and there's companies out there right now doing it, or where the company is offering the landowner, they're offering them a royalty percentage, but they're saying, hey, uh, if you want more money up front, we'll reduce that royalty percentage. So as an example, maybe a company, maybe a company does something like this. Uh, we will give you $500 per acre as a bonus and we'll pay you at $500, we're going to pay you a 20% royalty. So we'll give you 500 per acre as bonus, and then if gas is produced, we will give you a 20% royalty. Well, 20% royalty, very, very nice. We like that. That is very high for today's standards. There's not many places at all that you're gonna get 20% royalty, but it is being offered out there in Pennsylvania in certain areas. So okay, that's one option. Then on the flip side, the company says, however, we're gonna give you a couple other options. And we'll say another option is, and I'll just give two for this example. So they say, or you can have a $1,000 per acre bonus, but we're gonna reduce that royalty instead of being 20%. We'll, if we give you a thousand per acre bonus, then we're gonna reduce that royalty to 16%. So yeah, we like that $100, or I'm sorry, the $500 increase to $1,000 for the royalty, but <laughs> there's a trade-off. We don't like the reduction down to 16% royalty. So what do you do? Now, just sticking with those issues, um, what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna look at your situation. You're gonna look and see, and you're gonna figure out, you know, hey, what is my life situation? Uh, how many acres do I have? So if I have 10 acres, and we say, okay, well, that's gonna be either a $5,000 bonus or a $10,000 bonus. I'm gonna have to pay taxes, ordinary income in this money. So after taxes, what is gonna be the difference? And then say, you know, what type of impact will that have on my life? Is that going to change my financial situation? Uh, also, what do I think may happen in this area? Do I think that it's highly unlikely that there'll be any development in this area, in which case maybe I want to maximize my money? Then, you know, that's the example of a 10 acre person. All right, well, let's say that you have a hundred acres. So now your choice is if you go forward to the agreement and everything goes through, that with 100 acres, your option would be that you would get $50,000 up front, and then in the future, you would have 20% royalties if there's production. So 50,000, a lot of money. 20% royalty, very high royalty. Flip it over, well, if you take the other option and you wanna say, well, you know, I'm not sure how productive this is going to be. Uh, I'm older, uh, or hey, I have some debt. I'd like to maybe pay off my mortgage. I'm close to retirement. Uh, if I take the other option, well, if the lease and everything goes through, I'm going to be paid one hundred thousand dollars up front, and then the negative is only sixteen percent royalty. So you got some thinking to do. You're going to have a hundred thousand dollars and fifty thousand more than what you would otherwise, and maybe you are again close to retirement. Maybe you're in your seventies um, or eighties and say, "Hey, you know, I could use this money now. I don't want to wait and hope that I may receive royalties, which you may not, which I may receive royalties in the future." 
maybe it's a five-year option uh, or five-year contract and the company can extend it five years or maybe within that five years right at the end of the five years the company does something to extend or allow this lease to continue but you're not getting royalties that quickly and so maybe it's going to be another three years or more until you start seeing royalties. So, you know, it's not impossible that you're going out eight years or more, uh, depending on the contract. And one company's out there demanding 10 year leases. So think about that. Maybe it's going to be 10 years or more before you even may see royalties. Now on the flip side, maybe you do see royalties more quickly just because you sign a 10-year lease or a five-year lease doesn't mean that you have to wait at least that type of time frame in order to get royalties you can sign a 10-year lease the company can drill next year start producing and now you're getting royalties in year two even though you had a 10-year lease however however when you sign that 10-year lease or you sign a lease that has an extension to it or even a five-year lease that company doesn't need to do anything except conduct operations which is usually defined or is going to be defined in the oil and gas lease they have to conduct operations within that five or ten year time frame operations may be filing for a permit so maybe here you are right at the end of five years or ten years and the company merely files for a permit then they would do diligence proceed drill a well maybe that takes six to nine months say and now there's no pipelines there especially in areas without development so now you go into a shut-in phase and maybe that's going to continue two or three years so these things can get extended out a lot further than what people you know think a lot of times now again doesn't mean it will but it can so circling back here I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 on these stations talking about royalty offers and options. And there's people out there, my example, true example, uh, people are out there being offered options. You're going to have, you can have an increased upfront bonus, but you will have less as a royalty percentage, or we're going to offer you a higher bonus and you can i'm sorry you can have a higher bonus and lower royalty percentage or you can have a lower bonus and higher royalty percentage so i apologize I believe i misspoke there so okay those landowners have some thinking to do and like i said in my example if you're older and that money may help you a lot more in the immediate future or not even if you're older if you're looking at you know and this comes into like my examples i chose those on purpose because if you had 10 acres your options would be um, one, or I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars. You could have ten thousand dollars and sixteen percent royalty, or your total upfront payment would only be five thousand, but you'd have twenty percent royalty. So there, the immediate difference is going to be actually less than five thousand dollars because you're going to be paying taxes on that money. So maybe there, that landowner says, "Well, you know what? I'm going to let this thing ride and look for that twenty uh, percent royalty." Now think about that. 20% royalty is quite a bit more than 16%. I mean, that's 20%. I don't want to confuse with numbers, but that's 20% higher. Um, so that's a big deal. So that 20% is something we definitely like. However, you have to weigh that against. Uh, what is your life situation? How many acres do you have? Say now you have 200 acres. Well, you have 200 acres. Now you're looking at a payment. If you take the $1,000 option, now you have $200,000. And for most people, that's going to be money that's going to change their lives in some way. Uh, that's a really nice size check to receive. So there, maybe you say, you know what? Bird in the hand. And remember, nothing is in the hand until it's in your hand. Um, but bird in the hand, hey, I think I want to go this route. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. Again, I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9. When we get back after this break, I'm going to talk some more about this, but I'm going to throw in something else. I'm going to throw in that royalty language, and we're going to also throw in the idea that some companies say, well, we'll give you certain royalty language, but if we give you that language, then we're going to reduce the royalty percentage that we're offering you you need to be very careful and if you're facing these numbers or you're facing these options you absolutely want to stay tuned please do i'll be right back after this break welcome back to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm here every sunday from 8 to 9 a.m 
And if you need representation, you can always contact me uh, anywhere in Pennsylvania. If you need representation, contact me directly at 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. And remember, I represent landowners and only landowners. So, okay. Talking about this option that many people have uh, that's being offered to them now, or some people. Uh, Also, you know, this comes into play, too, that if you're sitting there and you're looking at your lease... You know, these factors come into play for you also in trying to understand maybe what to expect going forward. So, okay, uh, and we're going to be quick on this, but resetting briefly. So, if a landowner has an option of $500 per acre as a bonus offer, and in this case, we're saying that they have an offer for up to, or not up to, for an offer for 20% royalty, the company says, well, you can take that offer or we'll give you an alternative offer. We'll actually give you an offer of $1,000 per acre. So we'll double the per acre bonus price that we're going to pay you for this lease. But instead of getting 20% royalty, we're going to reduce that number down to 16. So the landowner has a choice to make. Which one of these two options am I most interested in? And it's not just something where you just say, oh, well, okay, I hear I want to have royalty. Royalty is where the big money is. Uh, there's some other factors you want to look at. And so I talked a little bit about the first segment. You want to look at, you know, what is your life situation? Uh, what do we see in this area? What do we anticipate seeing? Uh, how, you know, what is your general personality? How many acres do you have? Is this going to be money that's going to significantly change your life or change your life that you want to maximize up front? Uh, there are many people who have signed leases and have seen the development. Now, on the flip side, there are many people who have entered into leases and have 12.5% royalty or 15%, and boy, they wish they had 20% because they're seeing a lot of production. So those are all factors and things to consider. So those are very important considerations that depend upon you as an individual, and you want to make sure that you really weigh and understand the different options and what are the benefits of each op- option, what are the detriments, you know, the pros and cons. You want to understand that and you want to make sure that you're asking yourself in, in this process, in your evaluation, you want to make sure that you're considering all of the relevant factors. You want to make sure you're you're considering them all because what's right for you may not be right for someone else. So just sitting there and reading something and saying, oh, well, I should always taste the royalties. Well, that's not necessarily the case. You need to understand what is right for you. I am Attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And I'm going to throw in another curveball to this. And very, very important curveball here. Say we throw another very important variable into this offer. And we're seeing this. So the company says, okay, we'll give you these options that I've just explained. However, the landowner says, you know, I'm a savvy landowner. I read the internet or I go on the internet. Uh, I read things. I've become smart. I'm informed and I know I do not want to have deductions taken from my royalty. I do not want to see these post-production costs being uh, subtracted or deducted from my royalties because I know that that's going to result in me getting significantly less royalty money. So, company landman who works for the company, uh, I would like to have no deduction language. Red red uh, flags up everywhere here for you as the landowner. Please, you need to understand what no deduction language is. You need to understand that, and I'll guarantee you that most landowners and probably most attorneys don't understand that either. Also, when you come into this, you need to understand that what you might think is no deduction royalty and in fact, maybe one company with this language is not taking these deductions and subtracting them, but other companies are. So you need to watch out also because if you enter into this lease agreement with the company who's in front of you, whose name is on the lease agreement, that does not mean, I assure you, that does not mean that that company is ultimately going to be the company that develops your property if there is development. Many, many times, many times, countless times, we see people who enter into gas leases and those gas leases are assigned or transferred or sold to other entities. Also, if you're signing up with a smaller company, 
There could be some takeover activity. So there are so many different ways. You need to understand that whatever the company is that you're signing your agreement with, and I don't care what in the world it is that they tell you, because I've personally seen it many, many times, that does not mean that that's going to be the company that's going to develop your lease. So as a smart landowner, here you are, you say, okay, well, I have this option, $500 per acre for a bonus, 20% royalty, or I have a $1,000 bonus and 16% royalty. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I like this 20% royalty quite a bit, uh, especially if I can go ahead and move forward. I want to have this no deduction. So, you know, if I get 20% no deductions and I see production, and if that production's good at all, that's going to be the best choice in virtually all cases that you can make. However, um, are you going to see that activity? Are you truly going to see no deductions? So in this case, and you really, I'm telling you, you re really need to get assistance if you're going to go down this path because you need to understand from your counsel, from your uh, person who's experienced in oil and gas contracts, development, royalty issues, you need to understand whether the language that's in the agreement or being offered means what you think it means because it very well may not mean what you think it means. And that mistake, depending upon the size of your property, and this is not an exaggeration, depending upon the size of your property, can easily go into the hundreds of thousands of dollars and even higher and even higher. So you need to understand these points. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, I, I heard this, I read this, I saw this on a net message board. These mistakes are brutal and they are going to last for decades and decades and decades. And don't be a person that says, boy, I wish I would have talked some, to somebody before. Because if you thought you had no deduction royalty language and all of a sudden you start getting checks and those checks show deductions of 30, 40, 50% of your royalties or they have deductions of 10,000 a month or more or even 5,000 or even 500 if you don't have a big royalty check, you're going to be very, very disappointed and you need to understand what you have and what may happen in the future. So. I am Attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. What we got to do then here is we need to look at what the language is going to be. Now, what happens is, well, companies will, and we've seen this before, companies will turn around and say, well, yeah, uh, landowner, you want to have no deductions. Well, if you have this no deduction language, instead of giving you 20%, uh, let's say we'll drop that down to 18%. So now here's the third offer variable. You can have $500 and 20% with regular language that we're allowed to take deductions. You can have, in my example, $1,000 per acre and 16%, again, with the ability to take deductions. Or if you want, if you want language that's going to, what the company landman tells you, remember what the company landman tells you is going to stop deductions. Well, we're going to reduce that royalty percent by two percentage points. So if you take $500 per acre and you want to have no deduction royalty language, which I cannot possibly say enough, doesn't necessarily mean that's what you get. Well, then you're going to have a redu reduction of 2%. So you're going to have five, $500 per acre, 20% royalty with guaranteed deductions being taken, or we'll give you this no deduction language, but instead of being $500 per acre and 20%, we're going to reduce your royalty by two percentage points and we're going to pay you $500 per acre, 18% royalty, and no deductions. Well, generally speaking, in my opinion, generally not specific advice for anybody, not specific advice for anybody, but I will tell you if it were me and I had an offer and my two choices were 500 an acre, 18%, and I knew 100% there would be no deductions for my royalties versus $500 per acre and 20% with deductions, my opinion, not specific advice for anyone is, I would take the 18% if I was guaranteed no deductions. Well, I'm gonna tell you, that's a pretty tough 
guaranteed to get. And when I look at the contract language that's being offered and being told to people, well, this means you won't have deductions, I am going to tell you that, in my opinion, the language that I'm seeing presented in almost all of these leases where the land man who works for the company tells the landowner, well, this means no deductions. Well, I can point to you at least three different companies, major producers in Pennsylvania, that are all taking deductions with that same exact language that the land man in front of you says, there'll be no deductions. That is so important and you must understand it. We see major transfers of ownership. You see it, you read about it, hundreds of millions of dollars exchanging hands in exchange for hundreds of thousands of acres of leasehold in leaseholds in Pennsylvania. So you sign with the company who says, oh, we're not going to, whose landman who works for the company says, we're not going to take royalty deductions with this language. This company isn't going to do it. You sign a lease, maybe that makes you comfortable, which please make sure you're getting assistance on this. Uh, you sign this lease because you think, okay, hey, I believe this, which is a mistake, uh, without your own assistance. But you say, okay, I'm going to go ahead. I, I, there's going to be no deductions. I'm happy with this. And so I sign this lease. Well, say before production even starts or even after, but let's just say, you know, you sign a lease, it's a five year lease. All of a sudden, Sunday morning, listening to all things Marcellus, you take your coffee, reading a newspaper, and you do a double take because you see that a company will say uh, Anadarko. I'll say Anadarko today. Anadarko bought your lease, bought all the area or all the leaseholds and leases in your area. Well, the language that's in your lease, Anadarko, takes deductions. If you have this land contract language and you're leased to Anadarko, they're going to pay you royalties with deductions because that's how they interpret the language. However, with this specific language, maybe the company that you were leased to wasn't taking deductions or in a lot of cases, maybe you don't even know because that company never even had the opportunity to develop and pay you royalties. They you entered into a lease agreement with them and they sold it and transferred before there was ever any production. So now the landman who sat at your kitchen table, who works for the company, is long gone, long gone, and you're sitting there with language which you thought, which you thought meant that you were guaranteed not to have any deductions taken from your royalty checks for post-production costs, well, now your lease has been assigned to another company and you have no say in that. And now that company we know is going to take deductions because that's how they interpret this language. So what happened? Well, you took the option. You had the choice, $500 per acre and 20% royalty or $500 per acre and 18% royalty, but for that exchange of reducing the royalty by 2%, you thought you were getting a guarantee of no future deductions. However, now we know the company who holds your lease is going to take deductions, and here you are. You're sitting there with 2% less royalty that was offered to you as one of your options, and you're having deductions taken. So talk about a kick in the butt. <laughs> you're saying, Wow, uh, the reason why I took this offer and I I gave I gave up two percent of royalties because I thought I was guaranteed that I was not going to have deductions. Think about that sentence. I thought I was guaranteed. I thought I was guaranteed. Although you thought you were guaranteed, you weren't guaranteed. Now you're having deductions taken. And instead of getting 20% royalty, you're getting 18% royalty. Well, you got a mistake there. And how do you counter that? Well, coming in before you ever sign any agreement, you talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. You talk to somebody, an attorney, oil and gas attorney, who knows what they're doing, who can help you. I say this often. Look, yeah, it sounds self-serving. I'm an oil and gas attorney. However, whether it's me or somebody else, you need to talk to somebody because you certainly don't want to just give up and mistakenly gave up 2% royalty for the life of the lease 50 years or more. You know, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially, potentially 
because you didn't get assistance and you believe the land man who works for the company who is sitting at your kitchen table telling you you're not going to get deductions well that land man is long gone and now you have deductions and you got a problem and how are you going to correct it i am attorney doug clark you're listening to all things marcellus here every sunday from 8 to 9 a.m i'm going to be right back and talk more about these issues i'll be right back after this break Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. If you miss any of today's show, you can go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pagasleaseattorney.com. Tomorrow morning, Monday morning, check it out. We'll have the show up there, have a bunch of other shows up there. I've been doing the show uh, weekly since August of 2010, so closing in, eh, it might be a bit early to start saying it, but closing in on five years. So go to pagasleaseattorney.com, go to pipelineattorney.com, go check out the sites. If you're looking for information or representation, you can always contact me at 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702, represent landowners and only landowners. So okay, turning back. It gets better, guys. It gets better. So here you go. You're going to be brief on this again, and I apologize, but it's important if you're just joining. You have an option to lease. Company says, we're going to give you a couple different alternatives to choose from, which, hey, alternatives are are good. Well, we like alternatives. So the company says, we're going to give you the offer to lease, and we're going to say, we will pay you $500 per acre and 20% royalty is one of the options. I talked earlier, another option was $1,000 per acre and reducing the royalty to 16%. But in both of those cases, the company was clearly going to be allowed or will be allowed to take deductions for post-production costs and take those deductions from your royalty payments. And again, you know that coming in, that's what you can ask for, that's what you know you're getting, that's what the offer is, and you make a decision what's right for you. However, Throwing in this additional variable, very, very, very important. This additional option is, instead of, and I'm just gonna focus on the one, I talked earlier in the first segment about the different offers and what might be right for you, but looking at this and saying $500 and 20% royalty, that's the one that's kind of piquing your interest, that's what you're looking at. But you're a smart landowner, you say, hey, I don't wanna have deductions taken from my royalty payments for items such as gathering and transportation, compression, dehydration, and so on. So you say, okay, company, I'm going to elect to take this $500 per acre offer, and I'm going to take it at 20% royalty. Let's go ahead. Um, One of the important addendum terms that I want is I want to have royalties without deductions. Well, you better know what that language is because many, many people, I mean, there have been hundreds and probably thousand plus people who thought they were going to have no deductions and there have been deductions. So you're sitting here now with the company landman. You don't have an attorney yet or you don't have an attorney there. Uh, you don't have an attorney. And you're sitting there with them and the company landman says, who works for the company, okay, well, we will offer you this language and you won't have deductions, but instead of 520%, we're going to give you a lease for $500 and per acre and 18%. So in exchange for this no deduction provision, we're going to reduce the percentage of royalty we're offering you to 18%. I said earlier, though not specific advice for anyone, if you were guaranteed that you would not have any deductions for post-production costs, guaranteed of that fact, well, to me, it's going to, in most cases, be pretty clear we're going to take that. The problem is, how do you guarantee that? And too many times people think they have something and they don't actually have it. And now the company landman says, okay, here's the language we're going to give to you. This means that you won't have deductions. And you say, well, okay, sounds good to me. I read it. Looks okay to me. Uh, What do I need an attorney for? This isn't about trying to sell you to get an attorney. Um, But you need to because you go through this, you're dealing with the company landman who works for the company and he's saying to you, yeah, this language means there'll be no deduction. Well, I want to point something out and I talk about this in leases a lot, what I call the landman free pass Uh, and why I call it that way. And that's just my little term for it because it's saying, hey, landman, you can say almost anything and it doesn't matter because all that matters is what's in the actual agreement. That's what matters. So 
my example, if you go out six, seven years and you start getting royalty payments and now you're seeing deductions taken and you say, wait a second, I gave up 2% of royalty because I was told I would have no deductions taken. Here's a key word there. I was told. I was told. Who told you? Company Landman. I think of ultimately, I want to say Company Landman. Everyone go, who works for the company? So the Company Landman tells you, okay, this means no deductions. Check this language out. It's in contracts all the time, uh, but this is even, you know, this is even a little further than what we normally see. This is what, again, I call the free land or free pass for the landman. So this talks about that the entire agreement between the landowner and the company is embodied in the lease. So saying that, again, if it's not written down here, then it's not part of the agreement. So anything orally explained to you, verbally told to you, doesn't count if it's not in the agreement. And it says that in black and white. It goes on, no oral warranties, representations, or promises have been made or relied on by either party, it's funny, either party, as an inducement to or modification of this lease. So what's saying here? It's saying that, look, you're agreeing as the landowner, you're signing off to say this landman or the company or the company representatives did not make any uh, oral warranties or representations and I didn't rely on anything that they've said to enter into this lease. That's what they're saying to you. Pay attention to that. Goes on. It says that the landowner and the company each stipulate, declare, and agree that they have each contributed, listen to this please, they have each contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting of the lease. That each contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting of this lease. Uh, you know, I've been doing this starting in 2007. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think I've ever came remotely close to contributing equally as an attorney uh, negotiating hundreds and hundreds of these leases. So you as the landowner, it's saying you're saying here that you agree that you have contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting in the lease and that each party had the opportunity to have it reviewed by the by counsel, meaning legal counsel, before signing and accepting it. Again, very important. There, you're saying, yeah, I had the opportunity, um, and maybe you didn't elect to take that opportunity. So now you're signing off as a landowner saying, look, I didn't rely on anything the landman who works for the company told me. Didn't rely on anything like that. All the promises are in this document, which I, as a landowner, as a landowner, contributed equally to the negotiation and the drafting of the document. And yes, I also had an opportunity, if I wanted to, to have this document reviewed and get legal counsel to make sure that everything in this document I understood and I knew to be what it was, or I understood what those terms were. So think about that. You better darn well know what you're agreeing to. You better know, because if you come back and you say, well, the land man, he told me, he told me I wouldn't have deductions. Well, it says right here that you indicate that no other promises were made to you. You weren't relying. They weren't inducing you anything that was said orally or verbally to you to enter into this agreement. Oh, yeah. And by the way, uh, you say, well, this no deduction language, uh, you know, you guys presented that. You told me it meant no deduction. And so therefore, you know, I relied on that once again. You're saying that no oral statements uh, or verbal statements were anything that induced you. So now you have to look at the contract. And now you're looking at this language and you say, well, you know, company, you drafted this. You gave this to me. You told me that I was not going to have deductions. Well, remember here, you're saying that you contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting of this lease. So, you're saying that you contributed. This was, you're not going to get any type of, uh, 
a, a positive view from the court to say, hey, this is vague language. The company drafted it. It's misleading. And so therefore, we're going to we're going to take this presumption or we're going to assume and we're going to interpret this against the company because they a draft they drafted that. Well, that's what this document or that's what this language is about. It's about trying from the company's perspective to say, hey, if this ever goes to court and a court has to decide, um, hey, look, we're, we're going to have to construe this language. And because it was drafted by one party in contract law, if it's drafted by one party, well, that benefits. So if you're the drafter, that can come back to bite you if it's not drafted clearly because you're going to end up seeing that a court can say we're going to construe this ambiguity uh, and this uncertainty against the drafter because they could have corrected it. Well, you're saying here that you contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting when in reality, of course, you didn't. You didn't draft that language. The landman told you what it meant and that's what you were going and that's what you agreed to and that's why you agreed to it. And you also had the ability to take it to legal counsel. So imagine you're sitting there in court someday and you say, well, judge, uh, the landman told me uh, that it meant that I wouldn't have deductions. But didn't you agree, sir, in your lease that you didn't rely on anything that was said to you? Well, yes, I, I did do that, your honor. And then it goes on. You said, well, you know, Your Honor, they drafted this. They wrote this language and, and it's unclear. Uh, you know, certainly it's unclear and there's some ambiguity there. So I think because they drafted it, it should be construed against them and in my favor. Well, doesn't it say here, sir, that you contributed equally to the negotiation and drafting? Well, yes, yes, I did, but but I really didn't. Well, then why did you sign it? Well, it says here, sir, also that you had the opportunity to take it to legal counsel and you didn't, or, or you say you had it and you could have, but you didn't do that. Is that right? Well, yeah. So now you're sitting there with that language and you got some problems because you're having deductions being taken. Okay. So then, you know, it goes on to state here that, it, you know, just the points that I just stated, it goes on to state that. It is therefore expressly agreed, expressly agreed, that the lease shall not be construed against the landowner or the gas company based upon who drafted the lease or who supplied the basic form, meaning the gas company. Comes back to, you better darn well know, if you have language, it's gonna give you no deduction royalties or not and a lot of times you may not know that and I, I talk to my clients all the time about this where hey look here's the language you have here's the best language we can get what does that mean what do we see now how are different companies treating this language what do we anticipate may happen in the future and you know what maybe there's unknown but in the unknown then at least you understand that there's something that's out there that's a variable that we don't know the answer to and that, well, even though it's unknown, when I piece everything together, I'm gonna to go ahead and still do this. Or we can maybe say, yeah, it's unknown, but we think this may happen. So that's where getting all of this information, but you know, even more importantly, maybe the language is being offered. Maybe we can actually alter that language. Maybe we can make it more clear maybe we can draft language that will uh, reduce or eliminate entirely the company's ability to take deductions. And that is a very tricky situation because what language can be drafted for one company that they won't take deductions under, another company may take deductions under that same exact language. So we certainly would like to avoid future lawsuits if possible you want to make this clear. Your attorney should want to make this clear. I certainly would want to make it clear and do want to make it clear for my clients of saying, look, okay, you're signing this. Your trade-off is you're going to give up. You could have got 2% higher royalty, but in exchange, because you're going to get this provision seeking to eliminate the company's ability to take deductions for post-production costs, because you're going to have that language, you're agreeing to reduce your royalty percent by two percentage points that's a lot but if your language is written well well that can very well be a trade-off that you're more than happy to make
but you better have darn good language. And the company landman, there for the company, is not going to be your best resource to make sure that you're getting the language that you need. You really need to get assistance before you enter into these contracts because this is some dangerous territory and a mistake. I'm telling you, I see these royalty checks all the time. A mistake can cost thousands very quickly, tens of thousands very quickly, and absolutely hundreds of thousands and large landowners, it can go into the millions. I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I represent landowners and only landowners, and you can always contact me directly, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. You know, very important issues we're talking about here today, and I am so aware of the idea of saying, okay, well, yeah, you need to get assistance, landowner. You need to hire an oil and gas attorney. Well, unfortunately, if you, I mean, fortunately, unfortunately, however you may want to look at it, uh, you know, you need to do that. You need to do that because these mistakes can cost thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even into the millions. And the gas company landman, he is not there representing you. I always say, ask him to pull out his business card. And you know what? Uh, in another year or two, he, if he has a job, and you know, hopefully they have jobs, uh, is very well going to be out there seeking leases for a different company. So it's very important that you get the assistance that you need for you from your advocate, from somebody who can explain these issues to you. You do not want to simply give up two royalty percentage points thinking that you're going to have no deductions only to be tremendously disappointed in the future and then turn around and say, well, that guy lied to me. Well, what's your remedy? Well, you agreed that you didn't rely on anything that that person told you. You agreed that if that language is ambiguous, you agreed that you contributed equally to that language. So therefore, it's not going to be construed against the company pursuant to the a contract that you agreed to. You need to understand those things and you need to be very careful. So turning back to this and continuing on my example, you say, okay, well, you know, all right, you're saying all these things. Well, how about in this lease that they give me and I agree to take 18% and 20, instead of 20% because the landman says, here's the language that's going to give you no royalty deductions. Well, in this case, okay, in this case, the company and we see this often, see this very, very often, company offers the individual the market enhancement clause, saying it's agreed between the landowner and the company that notwithstanding anything else uh, contained in the lease, that all oil and gas roast, proceeds, excuse me, uh, accruing under, the, under this lease uh, shall be without deduction, directly or indirectly, for the cost of producing, gathering, storing, separating, treating, dehydrating, compressing, processing, transporting, and marketing the oil and gas and other products produced here under to transfer the gas into marketable form. Ladies and gentlemen, I have letters. I've written many companies saying, uh, hey, you're taking deductions here. Uh, you shouldn't be taking deductions. And I have letters from attorneys from companies saying, your client's gas, the landowner's gas in northeastern Pennsylvania, north central Pennsylvania, is marketable. It's in a marketable form at the wellhead. So therefore, once that gas is being moved from the wellhead through the pipelines to the point where it's always ultimately being sold, okay, as it's moving there, that gas, those aren't deductions. We're not taking deductions. We're enhancing the value of gas, which is in marketable form at the wellhead. So therefore, we are going to give you the wellhead price. We're, the company's going to say, we're not actually, we're not taking deductions. We're just not giving you the benefit of the enhancement to the gas that we are providing. Well, I guarantee you, when you entered into this contract as the landowner, you thought that you were not going to see deductions. Circling back around, my earlier example I use all the time, if gas is sold at $4 at the interstate pipeline, 
However, it cost the company a dollar to transport it there. You want your royalties calculated at four dollars. And you thought when you were signing this agreement that that's what was going to happen. You would get royalties on four dollars and there would be no charges for the cost that it took to get the gas from the wellhead to the point where it's being sold. However, many companies under this language are saying, well, uh, your gas is actually marketable at the wellhead and at the wellhead we're, we get three dollars it's worth because when we sell it for four dollars it cost us a dollar to get it there well we're gonna give you royalties at three dollars because the gas at the wellhead is in what they say to be marketable form at the wellhead and that's what our agreement was for and again you said well no 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 that's not what the landman told me that's not my understanding we sat there we talked a lot about it and in fact, that my headline in this uh, this provision even says no deduction royalty. Well, the company says, well, yeah, it says that because we're not taking deductions from your royalties. What we're doing is not allowing you to receive the benefit of our enhancing the value of the gas, which is marketable at the wellhead. So yes, maybe you know, every landowner out there is going to see this as a a deduction because the price is the gas is being sold at four dollars but the company is subtracting or working back to get the number of three dollars because it cost them one dollar from the wellhead to get it to the point of sale well every landowner i know says well wait a second that's a deduction and some companies say no 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 no, that's not a deduction because your gas is in marketable form or it's ready to be sold at the wellhead. We just don't do it there. So by moving it, we're not taking deductions from your royalty. We're not giving you the benefit of enhancing the value because it's worth $3 at the well site, but it's worth $4 downstream because we cost it cost us a dollar to get it there. We're giving you the $3 price. So we're not actually taking deductions. Well, again, uh, some companies don't do it that way. Many companies say, okay, well, we're not going to say that this gas is marketable or in a marketable form at the wellhead. It's not marketable until it gets to the interstate pipeline. Well, if your company takes that position, that's great. However, your company may alter that position in the future. Or another likely uh, scenario, or I'm going to say likely, but another certainly possible scenario is, is that the company that holds your lease sells it or assigns it to a different company. And maybe they only assign half of your lease or 25% of your lease or any other number to a different company. But that company says, you know what, Landowner, your gas is in marketable form at the wellhead. So now we're not going to give you that benefit and we're not going to give you the higher price for the gas. We're going to give you what price we would receive if we sold it at the wellhead. And so you can have, and many landowners know, uh, you can have multiple companies paying you because the first company sold a portion of your lease to a different company. And so now you get royalty checks from two companies. A lot of people we represent, I represent, get checks from four companies. And under the same lease, you can have one company who says, yeah, gas is not marketable until it hits the interstate pipeline, so we're going to give you the $4 price, but they sold or assigned half of your lease to a different company. That company takes a different position and says, no, landowner, your gas is marketable at the wellhead, so therefore we're going to give you the $3 price of gas. So simple math, that's 25% less money. Uh, very, very important. So you need to understand these. So then the question becomes, okay, can we create language that's going to protect you? Then it becomes, will the company agree to it? Now, in this one lease that I'm looking at, uh, you know, and, and I think the best way to consider this is just that market exa uh, enhancement example I just gave you, where you can think one thing, but the truth is we already know clear as day that that may not be how your language is ultimately interpreted. And the company land man, he's not going to tell you that. He's not going to say, well, yeah, this means no deductions. But of course, if Chesapeake, Anadarko, Chief, or some other companies hold your lease, they're going to take deductions. Uh, he's not going to tell you that. He wants you to sign the lease. Why? Because he works for the company and that's how he gets paid to go out there and acquire leases from landowners. So that's where you need to understand what may happen. And then think about it. If you're able to draft language, your attorney is able to draft language that protects you, you're talking about a major benefit for you. Or 
at least you understand, hey, this language isn't what I thought it meant. The landman tells me one thing, but that's not necessarily true. However, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway because I think this is in my best interest. Or, you know what, I'm not going to do this because I don't like this. All of those things are things that you need to discuss with your representative who's there for you and can help you. I am Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. I'm out of time, but I will be back next Sunday, 8 to 9 a.m. on these stations. Have a great week, everyone.